All right, 7.2 and 7.3. What I decided to do is put these two sections together because really there's not that much information in either one. Really what both of them come down to is a bunch of different formulas. There are things called the double angle formulas, the half angle formulas, angle addition formulas, and angle subtraction formulas. And these are not things that you have to have memorized on any test or exam where you'd be using these. I would provide you with exactly what you see written in red here, except typed out so they're a little bit easier for you to see. Over here on the right, we have the angle addition and subtraction formulas. The addition ones are where you see the pluses. The subtraction ones are where you see the minuses. And note that we have them for sine, cosine, and tangent. The half angle ones are when we talk about the sine, cosine, or tangent of half of an angle, so A divided by 2. And then the double angle formulas are over here. Those are the ones where you figure out the sine, cosine, or tangent of twice some angle A. And note that for some of these formulas, there's multiple different ways you can write them. Cosine of 2A, for example, we can write it as this this or this. Similarly, the half angle formula for tangent is either this or this. They're equivalent expressions, which might not shock you after getting through 7.1, where you saw all the different ways you can manipulate sines and cosines and write them in different formats to hear that these are actually the exact same thing as are these three lines right here. At any rate, with all these different formulas, I really think about it like there's two different things that you can do. The first thing you can do is you can kind of add to those memorized values that you have on your unit circle. So five pi over 12, for example, this is not one of the memorized points on your unit circle. If you're not super comfortable with radians, we can convert this into degrees. Let's see, pi is 180 degrees, 180 divided by 12 is 15, and five times 15 gives us 75 degrees. 75 degrees is not one of the memorized points on your unit circle, so it might seem like an unfair question to ask you, what is the sign of 75 degrees? However, you might notice that 75 degrees is, for example, 30 degrees plus 45 degrees. And because 30 degrees is one of the memorized points on your unit circle, and 45 degrees is another point that you have memorized values on your unit circle, we can use the angle addition formula to figure out the sign of 75 degrees, or 5 pi over 12. Well, you can do these in either radians or degrees. I think most students prefer to do them in degrees. I think it's easier for most people to see that 30 degrees plus 45 degrees equals 75 degrees than it is to see that pi over 6 plus pi over 4 is equal to 5 pi over 12. It is. You can check my math if you want, but a lot of people have a hard time recognizing this sum, whereas this sum's fairly easy for them to recognize. So my first piece of advice is if somebody asks you to figure out the sine of 5 pi over 12, what you might want to do is convert to degrees and be like, well, that's just the sine of 75 degrees. And then if we're going to figure that out using the angle addition formulas, what you have to do is come up with two numbers that when you add them together gives you 75 degrees. And you're like, well, that's easy, uh, 74 degrees and 1 degree. Okay, that's true, but we don't have the values of sine and cosine memorized at 74 degrees nor 1 degree. So it's not just any two angles that add up to 75 degrees. It's two angles for which you have the memorized values on your unit circle. So I think 30 and 45 would be the most logical choice. Those aren't the only two. I believe you have 135 degrees memorized and also what six, negative 60 degrees memorized and 135 plus negative 60 would also get you to 75. But maybe that would be a less obvious choice. At any rate, the sine of 75 degrees is just the same as the sine of 30 degrees plus 45 degrees. And if you have your angle addition formulas provided to you, you might note that the sine of something plus something is just the sine of the first thing times the cosine of the second thing plus the cosine of the first thing times the sine of the second thing. So I'm going to use this formula, except I'm going to replace all the A's with 30's and all the B's with 45's to get that the sine of 30 degrees plus 45 degrees is the sine of 30 degrees times the cosine of 45 degrees plus the cosine of 30 degrees times the sine of 45 degrees. Because we wrote 75 degrees in terms of two angles for which we have the values memorized on our unit circle, this becomes something that we can deal with. The sine of 30 degrees, that's easy, that's just a half. The cosine of 45 degrees, that's the square root of two over two. The cosine of 30 degrees, that's root three over two. The sine of 45 degrees, that's root two over two. All I have to do is multiply together some numbers and add them together and get my final answer. See, 1 half times root 2 over 2 is root 2 over 4. Root 3 over 2 times root 2 over 2 is the square root of 6 over 4. And the square root of 2 over 4 plus the square root of 6 over 4 is the square root of 2 plus the square root of 6 over 4. It's worth pointing out that you could also factor out a square root of 2 from each of these terms and rewrite this as the square root of 2 times 1 plus the square root of 3 over 4. These two things are equivalent, and either one is a perfectly acceptable answer. It doesn't matter which of these two you give me. If this were a test or exam, you'd get full credit for getting to either of these points, 
But on the homework, I think you'll see that sometimes they want it in one of the specific forms, so they'll tell you which form they want it on, and hopefully you can see that these two things are equivalent and get back and forth between the two. The point of this whole thing was just that the sine of 75 degrees is the square root of two times one plus the square root of three divided by four. Using our angle addition formula, we can add on to the values we had memorized on our unit circle. And while we don't really need three ways to come up with the same answer, in order to demonstrate the different formulas to you, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up with that exact same answer a different way. I'm gonna do it using angle subtraction. So for part B here, I'm gonna think of the sine of 75 degrees, not as 30 plus 45, but maybe, I don't know, what two numbers do I have memorized off my unit circle that when I subtract them, give me 75 degrees? Well, I think I mentioned earlier that 135 minus 60 is equal to 75. So I could rewrite the sine of 75 degrees as the sine of 135 degrees minus 60 degrees. And the advantage with 135 degrees and 60 degrees are they're both values you have memorized off your unit circle. So all we have to do is recognize that we're subtracting two things. So come down here to your sine angle subtraction formula and rewrite the above using this formula where all the A's are 135's and all the B's are 60's. So I get the sine of 135 degrees times the cosine of 60 degrees minus the cosine of 135 degrees times the sine of 60 degrees. And again, these are all values I have memorized off my unit circle, the sine of 135 degrees, maybe it helps to draw this out. That's talking about this point over here, whereas 60 degrees is talking about this point that's, I don't know, roughly speaking over here. So for 135 degrees, the sine is the y coordinate, the height here is the square root of two over two, whereas the cosine of 135 degrees, the x coordinate, is the negative of the square root of two over two. So I have minus negative root two over two. For 60 degrees, the cosine of 60 degrees is the x coordinate of this point, which is one half, and the y coordinate of this point is the square root of three over two. I got root two over two times one over two, so I have the square root of two over four, and then I'm subtracting this negative, which is the same as adding, and what I get is square root of two times the square root of three is the square root of six divided by four. Hey, that looks really familiar. That's exactly what I had over here. From this stage, I can turn it into either of these two forms and call this good. One more example before I end this video, I wanna figure out the same value a third way using the half angle formulas. So the idea here is to recognize that 75 degrees is exactly half of 150 degrees, and 150 degrees is a point on your unit circle that you have memorized. So I'll figure out the sine of 75 degrees by thinking of it as the sine of 150 degrees divided by two, and then I'll come down here to this half angle formula, which says if you're trying to figure out the sine of something divided by two, as long as you know the cosine of that something, you're good. Well, yeah, I know the cosine of 150, I'll be fine. So what I do is I take this formula, it's a little bit tricky, it has a plus or minus here, I'll just leave it as a plus or minus for now, but I need to go back and talk about that in just a second. And then what I have is the radical, and inside the radical of a quotient, one minus the cosine of whatever A is, remember A is the number that I'm cutting in half, so 150 in this case, divided by two. The plus or minus here does not mean that there's two different answers. It means that this formula doesn't have enough information to be able to tell you whether it should be positive or negative. So what you have to do is you have to go back and be like, well, 75 degrees, the thing that I'm trying to figure out, that's in my first quadrant. Roughly speaking, I don't know, up here. Well, in my first quadrant, the, the y coordinate is always positive, so the value of sine should be positive. So this is gonna be positive, not negative. I'll put a little plus here, even though you don't need to write a plus and say that's because 75 degrees is in quadrant one. Be careful what a lot of people do here is they look at 150 degrees and consider which quadrant that's in. You don't care about 150 degrees, it's the sign of 75 degrees that you're trying to figure out. Figure out the plus or minus based on the thing you're trying to figure out, 75 degrees in this case. So I have the positive of the square root of one minus something over two, that's something being the cosine of 150 degrees. You're probably more used to doing, dealing with radians at this point, but 150 degrees is the point that's kind of sort of over here. It's five pi over six. And I think that you know the cosine of 150 degrees is the x coordinate of this point, which is negative root three over two. So what this is saying is the sine of 75 degrees is this mess. And you're like, whoa, no, it's not. It's supposed to be one of these things up here. Well, I think this is equivalent to one of these things up here. And if we do a little bit of simplification, we can get there. I got the square root of, it's positive. I don't even need to write that. One minus this negative value. I can rewrite that as one plus root three over two. And that whole thing is divided by two. Hmm, fractions inside fractions. If this were just one fraction divided by another fraction, I'd know how to deal with it. Why don't I make it a fraction divided by a fraction? Up here in the numerator, my least common denominator would be two. So I'm gonna view this one as one over one and then make it two over two. So I can take two over two and add it to root three over two and get two plus the square root of three over two up in the numerator here. 
Down in the denominator, I have this two, which I'm gonna think of as two over one, so that I have a fraction divided by a fraction. We've seen several times in this class that when you have a fraction divided by a fraction, you can change the division into multiplication by multiplying by the reciprocal of the denominator. What I'm saying is take this two over one and flip it upside down, and that will give you the square root of two plus the square root of three over two times one over two. In other words, the square root of two plus the square root of three divided by four. At this point, I have the square root of a fraction, so I can rewrite that as the square root of the top, so the square root of two plus the square root of three, divided by the square root of the bottom, but the square root of four in the bottom here is just the number two. So I get the square root of two plus the square root of three over two. I'd call this a perfectly good answer, right? There's nothing wrong with this answer. I don't have fractions inside fractions. I don't have radicals in the denominator. I'm done at this stage. However, if I were you, I'd probably be a little bit annoyed that a teacher's like, just trust me, this is the same as this. You don't have to worry about it. So what I'm gonna do before I end this video is I'm gonna show you how this is the same as this. This is additional stuff that you do not need. The way I'm gonna show you that what you see in red here is the same as what you see in green here is I'm just gonna pick one of these guys in green and this guy in red and copy them down here in blue. And then I'll do the same thing to each of these until they look the same. So what I'm saying is it's kind of annoying that they're fractions. So why don't I multiply them both by four? My claim is that these two things are the same. And if these are the same, then four times these things would also be the same. If I multiply this thing by four, I get the square root of two plus the square root of six. If I multiply this thing by four, the two in the denominator and a two from that four will cancel. And I'll be left with two times the square root of two plus the square root of three. They still don't look the same, but they're clearly both positive numbers because I don't have any subtraction going on. So I can square this and square this and see if their squares are the same. And if their squares are the same, since they're both positive numbers, they must also be the same. So I'll have to consider the square root of two plus the square root of six squared and two times the square root of two plus root three squared. Over here, I'd have to foil. The square root of two times the square root of two gives me two. The square root of two times the square root of six gives me the square root of 12. The square root of six times the square root of two also gives me the square root of 12, and the square root of six times the square root of six gives me six. Over here, I have the product of two things, two and this radical, so this exponent has to hit both of them. Two squared would be equal to four, and two times the square root of two plus the square root of three, the square root and the square will cancel out, and I'll be left with two plus the square root of three. Let's see what I have here. Two plus six gives me eight, so I have eight plus two of the square root of 12 things on the left, over here, if I take this four and distribute it through, I got eight plus four of these square root of three things over here. They're almost the same. As long as I can show that two times the square root of 12 is the same as four times the square root of three, I'm good. If eight less than this is the same as eight less than this, then this is the same as this. How can I show that these are the same? Well, the square root of 12 is just the square root of four times the square root of three. So I can rewrite the square root of 12 as this product, and the square root of four is just the number two. So this is two times two times the square root of three. In other words, four times the square root of three, which is exactly what I have written over here. What I'm saying is four root three is the same as two root 12, so I can put an equal sign here. And if these two are the same, eight more than each one is the same. And if these two are the same, then these two must be the same because all I did was collect like terms and distribute. And if these two guys are the same, well, then these two are the same because these just came from expanding these two binomials. And if these two are the same, their square roots are either the same or one is the negative of the other one. But since these are both positive numbers, they must be the exact same, which means these are the exact same, which means these formulas actually work. And this answer that I got in red here was equivalent to these answers that I got in green. They just look a little bit different when you use the half angle formula as opposed to an angle addition or angle subtraction formula. It's worth pointing out that I've only done the sine angle addition, subtraction, and half angle formulas, but you can do more or less the same thing if it's cosine or tangent, and even if it's double angle as opposed to half angle. So I don't think you need to sit through another video of me demonstrating those. I think you can just follow this example with slightly different formulas to figure any of those out on your own.